Hey guys, today we are going to talk about seven cards that we haven't seen in a while, starting with a planeswalker we have not seen in a while, Garuk Apex Predator. At one time, this card was below $10. It was a very good buy. It has four abilities and is incredibly unique in the fact that its plus ability actually kills a planeswalker. It does have a protection ability as well, a free free token with death touch is definitely very good and you can outright destroy a creature and gain the life so overall group is a very good card in the eth decks that want to play him he's going to be good for some time m15 was a very good set actually i was looking at the prices recently and unlike most core sets it did it's doing well so garuk apex predator one of the better cards that came out of that set and something that has stabilized and is ticking up. I do expect this card to break $20 eventually. It's $12.50 now. Very difficult to reprint this card. Something that is not likely to be in a commander product as well. Next, if you have bulk, old bulk, this is a card you should look for. Uh, Slight of hand from 7th edition. It has been going up. We did lose Gatachin Probe. In addition to that, we we lost Ponder a long time ago from the ban. So, sleight of hand, the next best card. Step right up. It replaces the four Gatachin Probes you lose in many of the control decks. Now, it's not as flexible as Gatachin Probe, mainly because it's not strong and it doesn't have Phyrexian mana. So, random decks are not going to be able to play it. You have to be in blue. But as a sorcery speed... Look at the top two cards of your library, put one in your hand and the other on the bottom of your library. It's not bad. It is card selection. It is semi-okay for miracles. I know I I know it's interesting to look at commons, uncommons as being where MTG Finance is, but that's where it is. You can find if you have bulk of this, you can find dozens, if not close to 20 copies of this card this card was not considered good it was not considered a valuable card because back in 7th edition we were, had brainstorm in Macadian mask we had i believe brainstorm in ice age yeah we had brainstorm in ice age as well so why wouldn't anyone play this or in and in, in lower end we had ponder next uh grave pack there are some cards that just stand the test of time and no matter what Wizard of the Coast does to them, reprints or otherwise, it will continue to tick up, up, up in price. Mainly cards that are asymmetric, which discourage a single player from attacking you are very good. Because it gives you some time. It gives you time to build up. If you're a combo deck, it gives you time to find your combo pieces. If you're not combo deck, it gives you survival ability to figure out what to do next. Every turn, your opponent does not attack you because if they attacked you, you would send creatures to your graveyard and then each player would sacrifice a creature. Maybe they're not so happy with um, another player attacking you. And perhaps you can coordinate with an ally to attack you in a profitable way. I've seen this card go from sub $5 all the way up to $12 and I don't see it. I don't see why it would go down. Even with a reprint, triple black is really difficult to reprint. You have to be a mono black commander. I cannot see this in any product except commander. It's not iconic enough to be in iconic masters. I'm still very confused of what is going to be in iconic masters. Because a lot of the more expensive cards out there right now, they're just, they're not iconic. They're just expensive because they're expensive. Talking about expensive cards, Chalice of the Void is a $71 rare. Oh, Lord. Oh, man. It's a good card. Don't get me wrong. But when it came out, like, no one was like, oh, this is going to be a $70 card one day. It just doesn't feel like a $70 card. Like, a $70 card kind of feels like Jace Avenged Prodigy when it was in standard and every deck ran him. You ran four-color Jace just for the jaces you added blue just so you could have four jaces like it was so dominant it was so strong and it hit 80 dollars right in standard 
and modern we typically don't see that much um, in terms of value and actually interestingly enough frontier modern has killed frontier in my opinion I had another video set for that but uh, it just got kind of confusing for me too because there was a lot of examples and counter examples but my conclusion was the cheaper modern prices kind of offset the more expensive frontier prices and then why would you play frontier when you can play modern for the same price so you have one modern masters 2017 tanking all the prices to modern and then you have frontier where all these stores stores are trying to charge a ton of money for uh coco and Afenza and jace next let's talk about this card this card was unplayable <laughs> when it was in standard but it's okay now uh creatures you control get plus one plus one whenever you tap a land for mana add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced so here we have a very interesting one-sided effect most mana acceleration like mana flare i don't know if it's called mana flare some, something that doubles mana doubles mana for your opponent as well one-sided mana acceleration is okay five mana is also okay the problem with standard at the time was like if you get to five which probably took you turn six or seven because you're not going to have five land that soon what can you not play for seven mana in that that you would want to play the answer is nothing but in edh doubling your mana is incredibly important anytime you see the word double in a card probably pick up that card edh just gets out of control because instead of people killing each other really fast as is the point of standard and modern in uh legacy you want to end the turn fast in edh there are games that just go on forever uh next i do want to talk about the foil version of this one as well leyline of the void we see a resurgence in this card essentially any card not any sideboard card not reprinted in modern masters has gone up but i do feel like there is a interesting opportunity to buy the stony silences and the graph diggers cages because they were all 10 plus dollars before reprint mind sensor avon is very interesting it's a card no one's talking about and it's continuing to tank but i mean it was a pricey card at one day at one time so sideboard cards are just that people will inflate prices but if you can get foil copies of them get foil copies of them because it's harder to reprint I mean, Modern Masters is an exception because foils are so common in these sets. It's one per pack. But in something like Commander, something like um, any supplemental products, a a deck maybe, a modern deck, really difficult to reprint foils in those. That's why you see the foil difference, $70. This is considered the best version of it. Now, talking about foils, I did want to bring it back and to conclude with this card from Acadia Mass that no one played. Man, if you knew EDH would be the most popular format and you were like in the Acadia Mask era, you would buy every foil brainstorm. And I, let me put it this way. It wasn't, it was difficult to get them because we didn't have like eBay or maybe we'd had eBay, but I purchased all my Acadia Mask from Yahoo and i purchased all my onslaught from card kingdom and card kingdom was such a novel concept at the time because it was like oh wait we don't need to buy these like overpriced stuff from our store we can order online this card i have seen it in foil in the bulk pile and i still don't know i don't know what happened to it. i guess someone wanted to experiment with it from for edh before it spiked but man, when it spikes, when an old card spikes, an old foil spikes, it spikes so hard. Because uh, there's not that many copies of it out there. Vacating Mask, Urza's Legacy, Urza's Destiny, even Nemesis. Nemesis wasn't a great set, but some of the foils are incredibly pricey compared to the non-foils. Fantastic, right? Fantastic to have played during an era where your cards now are valuable 
is that Caladas? Is that a Revolt in 10, 15, 20 years from now? Will those cards, will these cards we have today be as valuable as the cards I had when I was younger? I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment below. Uh, bye, guys.